Hi, my name is Larry Jordan, and welcome to this Power Up webinar, taking a look at using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. If there's one area that causes confusion, it's how to work with still images, and that's what I want to talk about today. What I want to cover today is to start by defining key terms that relate to still images. I'll explain why it's hard to make stills look good in video. I'll provide a table of recommended image sizes for video. I'll show you how to make odd-sized images fill the frame. I'll show a variety of ways to get images to move and illustrate a really cool image trick that you can do with Photoshop layers. And we'll wrap up with using Multicam to edit an image sequence. A couple of key definitions before we start. The first is resolution. Resolution is the size of an image measured in pixels. Now, we've used DPI for years, but DPI is a measure of resolution that applies only to printing, not to video and not to the web. Video measures images based upon the total number of pixels across, the width, by the total number of pixels high, the height. The aspect ratio is the shape of an image described as the ratio of its width to its height, and common aspect ratios are 16 by 9 and 4 by 3. However, pixels too have aspect ratios. Most pixels for HD video are square, however HDV and some DVC Pro HD formats are not. Also, NTSC and PAL don't use square pixels, they use rectangular pixels. Square pixels are described as having an aspect ratio of 1 to 1. So here's the key concept. All video editing software expects images to be roughly equal to video frame sizes. This means that still images, which are generally shot at very high resolution, need to be scaled so that they are within the range that video editing software expects. While Final Cut Pro 10 can work with very high resolution images, in general, it is happier if image sizes are 4,000 pixels on a side or smaller. If you want an image to fill the frame, you need to make special note of this table. If you're working at NTSC 4x3, you need to create your image inside Photoshop so it's 720x540. Why 540 and not 480, you ask? Because the computer works with square pixels and NTSC works with rectangular pixels. This full screen size compensates for the difference in pixel aspect ratio between the computer, square, and NTSC, rectangular. If we're working with a 16 by 9 NTSC image, create your image at 853 by 480. This will perfectly fill the frame for a 16 by 9 NTSC image. If we look at PAL 1024 by 576, PAL is a very short, fat pixel. And when we deal with computer pixels, we've got to make some major differences there. So create your PAL image at 1024 by 576. For 720 HD, 1280, 720. And for 1080 HD, make it 1920, 1080. If all you want is a really high quality image that doesn't move, you're not zooming or panning, then set it to the numbers based on the full screen column. If, on the other hand, you want to do moves on the image, what are called Ken Burns effects, where you're zooming in or zooming out or panning left or up or down or whatever, then you want to make the image larger than full size so that when you zoom in, you never make the image greater than 100% size. Your image will never look good when the scaling is greater than 100%. The best your image will ever look is when the scale equals 100%. As we increase it, all we're doing is taking pixels and make them bigger. Fat pixels look blurry, they look grainy, they look terrible. So the secret to creating stills and moving them in video is to create an image which is larger than full screen, so when you bring it into your video editing package, it's reduced below 100% size, which means that you've got room to zoom in up to 100%, or zoom back or pan left or right. What you do is you take the full screen size and multiply each dimension by 2.5. This allows you to zoom in or zoom out two and a half times or pan left to right. And you can see the numbers listed there in the column on the far right. No moves, use the full screen numbers. Pan zooms, use the 2.5 moves column of numbers. Ken Burns effect. We want to do some moves here. Let's... Um, Check our images, they're all 16 by 9. You can, by the way, select all these clips here. 
go to the inspector and apply, notice as I scroll down, you can apply the fill spatial conform to them, which I did. So you don't have to do that one picture at a time. You can apply it to the whole group, and it'll all fill the frame. The Ken Burns effect is named after that noted filmmaker, Ken Burns, who made a career out of creating documentaries where stills move. He wasn't the first person to invent it, but he was the one that really popularized it. And Apple contacted him and said, can we name an effect after you? Which I guess is a, a great accolade for a filmmaker and film editor. They can name an effect after me if they want. Anyway, how do we create this effect? You select the clip. You go to here, that's the crop tool, and click it. And notice three choices come in. Trim, Crop, and Ken Burns. Trim masks or hides a portion of the image. Crop changes the size of the image by hiding stuff and enlarging the rest. We want to do a move, which is called Ken Burns. Generally, the effect starts with the green box over the entire image. That's your starting position. The red box indicates your ending position. I'm just going to grab one of these corners and I want to zoom in for a close-up of this buffalo which was shot a few years ago in central California. So we're going to zoom in right to there. When you're done, click Done. That's your ending shot. So let's just take a look. Spacebar to play. Notice it starts full screen and zooms in to our buffalo. Okay, well, the, the cool thing is, is that it works great. Select it. Our starting position is up here. And let's go to the crop tool, show Ken Burns. And it says this is where we're going to go, right there. You can adjust it. And the nice thing is, is that it's as easy as dragging the green or the red boxes around. It always moves from the start of the clip to the end of the clip. And that's both a good thing and a bad thing. I'll show you that in a second. Second, it always does an ease in and ease out. And you can't turn the ease in, ease out off. If you want it to be straight move with no acceleration, we'll do it with keyframes, which I'll show you next. If you need to stretch your training dollars, a subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 500 movies, dozens of hours of training, all in-depth and up-to-date. Plus, members can attend all our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on using still images inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.biz slash store and look for webinar 93.